All right. Are we ready to get started? Ready. Let's go. Okay, I have just after 11 a.m. on the East Coast. Welcome to everybody. We're going to kick off the day with um, a short kind of welcome message to, to frame the time we're going to spend together, a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, so I'll ask our production staff to, to launch the first comments. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NGS Delegate Council Kickoff Workshop. We have an engaging and interactive day planned. My name is Ethan Gray, NGS Membership Director. I'd like to extend my personal thanks and the gratitude of NGS staff members and our Delegate Council Steering Committee for your participation. You are about to learn more about what it means to be a delegate, network with your peers, and have plenty of opportunities for Q&A. I'd like to introduce the Delegate Council Steering Committee members and workshop facilitators who will guide you through the day's activities. Dawn Carey Henry chairs the steering committee. Sam Williams serves as vice chair, along with members Susan Howard, Tania Kuntz, Lois Mackin, Lori Moore, Sherry hudson Passy, Elisa Powell, and Ari Wilkins. I'm also pleased to welcome Greg Talley and Joe Sapp from Talley Management Group, who along with me will facilitate breakout sessions. These individuals will direct today's program, synthesize the discussions, and share post-meeting materials after our time together concludes. There are a few housekeeping items we need to go over to ensure a smooth experience for attendees. We will be using Zoom to facilitate the workshop. We will be moving from general sessions into breakout and networking groups and back into general sessions. Most breakout assignments have been predetermined and you will automatically be transitioned back and forth by our production staff. There will be a two minute countdown before a breakout session ends, and the facilitators will use that time to close out discussion and prepare for the next agenda item. While on Zoom, please engage accordingly. Please enter your name and your organization in the lower left of the Zoom video. To do that, click the bottom left of your image and select rename. Keep your camera on unless you are experiencing connectivity issues, in which case you may elect to participate without video. Please keep yourself muted unless specifically prompted by a facilitator during an open dialogue period. During open conversations, please engage respectfully with your fellow attendees and allow the full participation of others. When prompted, you may use the chat feature to ask a question or make a comment. And you can always use your elementary school skills and raise your, raise your hand while you're on camera during breakouts. That should catch the attention of facilitators. We will also be using an interactive tool called Slido to support some activities. You can use an additional web browser tab to access Slido, or you can use a second device like an iPhone or tablet to view content. We will practice using Slido during an icebreaker introduction immediately following these welcome messages. During breakout sessions, we will include a link to Slido in the Zoom chat box to ensure you can participate in interactive polls. There will be three breakout groups throughout the day. You have been pre-assigned to either group A, group B, or group C. Later today, there will be two networking breakouts. During the first, which begins around 4.45 Eastern this afternoon, you will choose among six topic areas to participate in. And at the end of the day, we will keep three breakout rooms open for a parking lot social, where you can visit and socialize with your fellow delegates. It's the closest we can come to recreating the atmosphere of standing in the parking lot and chatting like we used to do in the before times. You can use the chat function to let folks know which room you plan to go to so others can meet up with you. If you lose connectivity or accidentally exit out of the session, please reconnect to the main workshop and production staff will help you rejoin the right session in progress. If you have technical problems, you can also click on the word bubble in the lower right of the playbackngs.com slash delegates hyphen schedule webpage. Thank you for your attention. I would now like to introduce Catherine Doyle, NGS president. Catherine has been a member of the NGS board of directors since 2016. She served as vice president for two years and chaired the policies and procedures committee while overseeing the society's social media channels. She joined the NGS membership committee in 2015 and served as its chair through 2018. 
She was the communications director at the California Genealogical Society, CGS, from 2007 to 2013, where she edited, edited the CGS e-news and wrote its award-winning blog. Catherine has been working to set the direction for the new NGS since the merger discussions last year. She established the Delegate Council Steering Committee and selected Don Kerry Henry as its chair. And she has participated in steering committee meetings since the group was established. Catherine also formed the NGS Working Group on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and will provide background information on the forming of the Delegate Council. Thanks, Ethan. I'm Catherine Doyle, President of the National Genealogical Society. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Delegate Council Kickoff Workshop. This is the first meeting of, an, of the NGS delegates, so it is a historic moment in the genealogy community. Thank you all so much for being a part of this event and for everything you do for your societies, your libraries, archives, and museums. As you may know, the Delegate Council was created to fulfill a commitment NGS and the Federation of Genealogical Societies agreed to as part of the merger discussions last year. The Board of Directors approved bylaws changes to allow organizations to be NGS members for the first time. The amended bylaws also mandate the creation of an advisory committee to give member organizations a chance to network and to provide feedback to the NGS board. The concept is simple. Create a place where the genealogy, the genealogy organizations are given voice, but it's so much more than that. With hundreds of member organizations, each with many leaders and key volunteers, there are thousands of voices we want to hear. So we are setting out not just to create this advisory committee structure, but to build on it to create a vibrant home for genealogy organization leaders to come together and create the future of genealogy organizations. We have so much to build on. For over 40 years, the Federation of Genealogical Societies was the home for genealogy organizations. Over its history, FGS created fantastic continuing education for society leaders. With Forum Magazine, FGS conferences, blog talk radio, webinars, and a long list of educational white papers, FGS set the bar for strengthening our community. Now, together, we all will take that work and build on it. We will expand our work to serve genealogy libraries, archives, museums, and colleges. We will add new white papers, new videos, and more. We will revise older materials and ensure continued access to the forum archives. And we will restart the review process and programs for bylaws, newsletters, and websites. I am particularly pleased to announce today that we have retained Bobby King to review bylaws for genealogy societies. And there's more to come that you will learn about today and over the coming weeks and months. We will work to provide more access to member resources for organization leaders. The National Genealogical Society is committed to carrying forward the work started by FGS. We take our new mission very seriously. Finally, let me thank Don Kerry Henry, Sam Williams, and the members of the Delegate Council Steering Committee for their very hard work putting this event together. I look forward to hearing more about your discussions and working with you, the NGS board and our professional staff to build the new NGS. Back to you, Ethan. And thank you, Catherine. Uh, we are now going to engage in a short icebreaker activity to get to know each other a little bit better, get familiar with the Slido tool that we are gonna use for poll questions throughout the workshop. Uh, just a few more quick housekeeping notes. If you do have to leave or if you miss a portion of the meeting, the entire workshop is going to be recorded. So you'll have that as a reference point after the fact. Also, it's a, it's a long day. Uh, please feel free to eat. We know we have you know a couple of short breaks, but nutrition is important and uh, it'll help you stay engaged throughout the day. So, so please feel free to eat when you need to or take a bio break when you need to. If you are eating something particularly complicated, you might want to go off video. Um, 
so now we're gonna we're gonna engage uh, in an icebreaker activity through the Slido uh, app. So if you go to Slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com, you can enter NGS delegates, all one word, in the code box, and click the arrow. And while you're doing that, I'll give everybody a couple of minutes to access Slido. And if you wouldn't mind giving me a couple of thumbs up when, when you think you've accessed Slido so we can make sure that uh, we're ready to launch the, the poll. Thank you. All right, well, I think we're ready. Uh, um, oh, go ahead. Somebody so I put in NGS, okay. No need to put the hashtag in front of NGS delegates. It's already prompted in there for you. Good point. message that I'm getting is there are no active polls at this moment. That's the right message. So we'll go, we'll go ahead and have uh, our production staff launch the first poll. Yay. <laughs> so you should see this now via the app and you can respond directly in the app. Not seeing that. And I'm privy to the pre-registration list, so looks like a lot of the, <laughs> the organizations that I saw on the pre-reg list, which perfectly aligns. And I know we have quite a lot of geographical diversity, which is a wonderful thing. And again, thanks to all of those, especially on the West Coast who joined particularly early this morning. I did not type my name in there. I didn't catch how to do that. Hamilton County, Ohio. You should see a poll question if you've accessed uh, Slido and typed in NGS delegates, and you should see the poll question uh, right on the home screen once you've clicked the arrow barcode makes it very easy. Nope, all I'm seeing is a uh, little chat thing that says live interaction, but that's as far as it goes. Who's that that's speaking? And I uh, it's Tom, Casal Tom Casalka, Michigan Genealogical Council. Okay, Tom, just hang, hang tight for me for one second. I had fun with the uh, QR code here and my phone. So it goes uh, directly to the Slido thing. So it depends on which device you want to use, if the computer you're on or your phone. You're more advanced than me with the QR code. I would not attempt that. <laughs> that's, that's what uh, my mistake probably was. <laughs> it's much easier uh, with the QR code. Yeah. The QR code is just a point and shoot. Yep. <laughs> yep. Matt, I don't know what uh, group I was assigned to. Uh, you don't Jan, have to, you don't Jan, have to I'll know your... Yeah, I'll text you directly, but you don't, you won't need to know. Okay, It'll, thank you'll you. You'll go there automatically. Okay, thank you. And if you're having particular difficulty, you can go ahead and send me a direct uh, message via the chat function. We can try to troubleshoot that way as well. Looks like we're getting most people able to respond to the first question. All 
And I think we can go ahead. Let's go ahead and move on to the second poll. Wow, uh, there are some old folks in, in here. <laughs> <laughs> experienced. There are some experienced folks. Oh, there Speak you go. For yourself. <laughs> More than fifty percent. Yeah, that's great. I wasn't sure exactly. I wasn't sure exactly how the mix of experience is going to play out. Um, clearly, we're we're. Um, we're tilted in one direction versus another, but still plenty of opportunity to learn from each other. Congratulations, Janice, 46 years. Okay. Kenny Burke, 52 years. Well done. That's impressive. Anyone more than 52 years? What do I win? You don't want to hear <laughs> you don't you don't want to hear this, but my grandmother started me when I was born. So I'm oh. 60. literally, she bounced me on her knee and told me my family history from the very time I could listen to her. I, I promise you that. Oh, cool. Okay, it seems like everybody's getting comfortable with Slido. We can go on to the third poll. Max, while he's putting that other poll up, I was gonna say that is really great. My grandmother did too, but everything she told me was not correct. <laughs> Most <laughs> oh, of what she, she told, told me was not correct. <laughs> she had, she's, she was good. She was a good mm -hmm. genealogist, but there was a lot deeper story that she mm -hmm. didn't tell until mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm June the second for Legacy Family Tree webinars. I'm telling her entire story, and it's so Fabulous. cool. If you Fabulous! Want to, Can't if you wait. Want to watch it. Yep. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure this question is a yes or no. It's it's a duplicate. You can answer yes to either part of it. I had the same problem. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So do we answer the first? Are you a delegate or yes to new? Because for me, it's no delegate and yes new. Yeah, no delegate and yes new for me too. We, we, mostly, <laughs> we mostly want you to answer the first yeah, part. Uh, yes. Were you a delegate for SGM? No. No. No, I wasn't. So lessons learned on the wording of questions. We did yes. labor over. We did labor over all of these quite a bit. <laughs> so, oh well. I goofed, and somehow or another, I got backwards on my phone. So what's the code again? NGS. NGS delegates. Delegates. All, all one word, all lowercase. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. I just point your camera at the symbol on the. I would prefer not to. Thank you. Oh, Conejo Valley. Hello, Conejo Valley. I'm Whittier, California. We're neighbors. Hello. Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. I wouldn't close. want to walk it. Close. I wouldn't want to walk it. It's at least 35 miles. Yeah, but that's close in California. <laughs> For a minute, for a minute there, we were at 101 percent. I wasn't sure exactly how that occurred, but now we're back to 100 percent. That makes me feel better. Okay, so again, inter interesting mix, although we could have clarified the question a little bit better, but let's go on to the next question, please. Only one word? You're not limited to one word. 
Oh, okay. It says enter a word. I was oh, being sorry literal. About that. <laughs> no. Oh, man, I was going to be a smart aleck, but whichever one has what I need at the time. <laughs> that's, that's a long sentence. I wasn't going to put that on there. <laughs> some concentration here. I like whoever said my brain. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad that's useful. It's a very loaded question. And if you see a word that's already on there, you can select that word as well instead of having to retype it. Yeah, it helps it to aggregate it because uh, I see several that are family search spelled various ways. But this is great. I love these uh, word clouds that uh, show the concentration of uh, and popularity of certain items. Yeah, they're really fun. Yeah, we'll have a combination of multiple choice and I think some free text and some word cloud polls when we're in the breakout sessions later on. So it's a, it's a good tool to facilitate discussion. Awesome. All right, very interesting. So let's go on to poll question number five. Ethan's surname or first name? Good question. I think you could probably answer it <laughs> either way. Huh? Are any of your names the most unusual name in your family tree? I saw Cinderella briefly there. Middle name of just S. <laughs> Ethan, that's my dad. Wow. No middle name, just an initial. Interesting. By Carrie Truman. Now some of these, is Merry Christmas, is that, is that the truth? I was in high school with a girl named him, Merry Christmas. Hmm. I just saw a Greek surname. Just wanted to shout that one out. <laughs> I noticed it too, Katsuras. <laughs> that was my uncle, Naxos Greece. Nice. My husband's people were from the Peloponnesus. You're Sparty. Who is the other Cinderella? Because I have a Cinderella and it's so weird. Two Cinderellas? Yeah. You said Cinderella and I have a Cinderella. I did see a Cinderella right at the beginning. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. My husband's mother was. Okay. Hmm. Oh, well. Okay. Okay, and two, just two more quick polls. Um, we can move on to the next one. As I read this, maybe we should have included all of the above or even none of the above if you're anti-animal. Or plurals, like cats. Plural, plurals, yeah. <laughs> plurals, more than one. I have two big ones. 
I don't want to offend one of the other. I've got dogs and cats. I don't want to offend one. <laughs> want to choose two. A tiger in Houston. Uh oh. I really love my tropical fish, but they don't cuddle, so I'm going to have to say dog. Totally a fair explanation. I totally thought it was going to be a cat group. Really? Yeah, you see so many cats come across everyone's screen. <laughs> well, maybe that just means do dogs are more polite. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I had to move one of mine out because she snores. So I had to put her in another room. And that's all you'd hear all day was her snoring. <laughs> Up here, we uh, just sort of start naming the coyotes as our pets because they're all over the hills. <laughs> wow. Dogs don't sleep on the monitor. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> or walk across your keyboard. All right. And I know some of you jumped the gun just a little bit during um, the welcome, but let's close it out with the last poll. Love the last uh, option. <laughs> Ask yeah. me in a week and it might be snow. And for those that haven't had coffee, please try and do that and at least look out the window at some point today. <laughs> I'm actually a little concerned I'm going to lose the connection. We're supposed to have thunderstorms and hail mm -hmm. and winds and Oh, it may. <laughs> My internet's connected to a mountaintop across the way, so we'll see. It's really fingers. cold uh, May gloom here right now, or, you know, it's in, in Southern California, we have unusual weather, so they nickname it. Yes. May gray. <laughs> May gray, June gloom. Gloom, July fry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully that was that was a little bit of fun for everybody. Got you used to using Slido, which again we'll use throughout the day. Um, Hi. We can go ahead and close that poll. Um, hope everybody enjoyed that icebreaker. I now would like to to introduce uh, Matt Manashis and NGS Executive Director, Dawn Carey Henry, Delegate Council Steering Committee Chair, um, to talk about the new NGS. Hi, I'm Matt Manashis, NGS's Executive Director. I started my role at NGS in the fall of 2019, shortly after NGS and FGS began our merger discussions, and right before the pandemic put a kink in all things normal. So needless to say, it's been quite a ride since I arrived at NGS. Since I haven't had much of a chance to be on the road and meet with you, I thought I would just share a little bit about myself. I admit, I'm a beginner genealogist and have been for too long, about 15 years. I started my family genealogy research because I did not hear a lot about family history growing up. My father's ancestors are largely unknown to him and my mother's not much more. My hope is to eventually break down the brick walls I, like so many American Jews, assume are unbreakable. My wife, on the other hand, who descends from Midwestern Scandinavians, has a family history documented very well in a Red Book published in the early 1980s by her family in the Decorah, Iowa region. Her family we can trace back to the late 1600s, though I'd be the first to admit our tree is not well cited. So while I do my best to document my family history, like all of you, I'm here to learn from NGS. Some of you identify yourselves as genealogists. My identity, however, is tied to my profession. I'm a dot orger. I have been an association and nonprofit executive for more than 20 years and have served as the executive director of or president of trade associations, professional societies, and charitable organizations. I'm a certified association executive, which is akin to being a certified genealogist. I tell you this to make this point. I am thrilled to be able to use my experience to help each and every one of your organizations succeed. If you have ever a need where a dot orger can assist, feel free to email or set up a meeting with me. Consider me part of your team. But that's enough about me. Let's talk about the new NGS. 
As you are aware, NGS and the Federation of Genealogical Societies came together in the summer of 2019 to start the process of merging the two organizations. From the outset, the goal was focused on improving our combined focus on the needs of genealogy organizations. We all envisioned a new NGS made up of the best pieces of both organizations. The new NGS is focused on both the needs of individual genealogists and family historians, but also genealogy and family history societies and organizations. And we have built on that strength. The new NGS has over 10,000 individual members and over 600 member organizations, including genealogy and history societies, family associations, libraries, archives, museums, and colleges. And let me emphasize that point. The new NGS serves more than genealogy societies as members. We agreed that building a network of genealogy organizations of all types is the best way to ensure that we grow together. While each type and size of organization might have its own needs and organizations in each re region may have common needs, together as a whole, we can best serve genealogists and family historians throughout the US and beyond. Added onto the strength of these two fantastic member communities, NGS and FGS brought together knowledgeable and passionate leaders, exceptional publications and education programs, fantastic events, and a commitment to preserving and accessing genealogical records. These successful building blocks give the new NGS a firm foundation to build upon. We set out to position the new NGS with a focus for both individuals and societies and organizations. The new NGS seeks to assist people and communities on their journey through family history, no matter where they are along that journey, from beginner to experienced. And the new NGS seeks to create a strong and vibrant community of societies and organizations working together to benefit those genealogists, family historians, and the communities they come from. NGS is focused on building community for our own member societies and organizations as well. We believe that by creating a vibrant community, we improve our ability to assist each other, increase our ability to collaborate on common projects, and create opportunities to expand our influence. Today, you will learn how to use the concepts of collaboration, communication, and counsel as the three pillars of your own community, the Delegate Council. Part of our job together will be to help envision the programs, benefits, and services that not only meet your needs as delegates, but also meet your organization's larger needs. We will be focusing over the next year or more on making investments in membership networks, events, and technology. For membership networks, we've put a lot of emphasis this year on building the Delegate Council and getting ready for today's workshop. Again, we're extremely glad you're here. The advisory role of the Delegate Council is very important to the new NGS. It's this role, providing advice and guidance to the board that ensures we meet your needs and is ultimately why the council was created in the first place. This is your community. And as a dot orger myself, I am so excited to see what you all create together. We also worked with our partners to rename the Records Preservation and Access Committee as the Records, Access, Records Preservation and Access Coalition, signifying that the entire genealogy organization community should be part of the public policy and advocacy team in our field. And we've been adding new members to the Society and Organization Leaders Forum on Facebook, which came over from FGS. We now have 425 members in that Facebook group. Let me also point out that just this week, we are adding two new community events for genealogy societies and organizations. The SLAM Idea Showcase, which features exceptional new resources from genealogy information providers, and Focus on Societies, an entire day of education for genealogy society leaders this Friday. And later this year, we will launch our new membership community on the industry leading technology platform called Higher Logic. It will give both our individual members and our member organizations a place to communicate, provide support, and learn. So let me stop there and turn it over to Don Kerry Henry, who will speak to you more about our work and what comes next. Thank you again for being a delegate and taking your time to be part of this kickoff workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Welcome and thank you all for joining us today.
My name is Dawn Carey Henry, and I'm the chair of the Delegate Council Steering Committee. Today, we are here to kick off the Delegate Council Workshop, and I'm excited you've joined us. Before we start, I'd like to thank the Steering Committee members for their dedication, time, and talent. They've all been so great. You'll meet each of them later today. On October 1st, 2020, the merger of the National Genealogical Society and the Federation of Genealogical Societies was official, and that's what's brought us here together. Each of you are a delegate representing your genealogical society or organization, and each of you are a member of the Delegate Council. At the end of today's workshop, you will understand what the Delegate Council is, what the role of a delegate is, and how the Delegate Council will work. But before we get started, let's take a moment and look back at the legacy of the Federation of Genealogical Societies. The Federation of Genealogical Societies was established in 1976, comprised of member societies and organizations and their representatives, which were called delegates. For more than 40 years, FGS focused on three areas, serving the needs of its member societies, libraries, archives, and other member organizations, providing products and services needed by members, and marshalling the resources of its member organization. FGS had many successes. I'd like to highlight a few of them for you. The Civil War Soldier and Sailor System Project. FGS managed the volunteer efforts in conjunction with the National Park Service, and in 1999, volunteers had completed the data entry of more than 5 million names. The CWSS database currently contains over 6.3 million soldier records from more than 44 states and territories. Another project was the U.S.-Mexican War Soldier and Sailor Database. According to the National Parks website, the project started in 2007, and progress was extremely slow until 2015 when FGS joined forces with the National Park Service. The results of the efforts are more than 17,000 volunteer hours online in a searchable database containing more than 85,000 U.S., Mexican, and veterans' names who served in this war. The most recent project, and the one you're most familiar with, is the Preserve the Pensions Project. In 2010, FGS announced a national fundraising initiative to raise more than $3 million to support the monumental task of digitizing the War of 1812 pension files. Six years later, in 2016, the fundraising was complete, resulting in the largest fundraising effort ever initiated for a single genealogical record set. The records are now available for free on the Fold3 website. There was also the FGS Awards Program. For more than 40 years, FGS took time each and every year to recognize the accomplishments and achievements of societies, organizations, and individuals. As FGS Past President D. Joshua Taylor stated, the FGS Awards Program was a strong opportunity for societies to recognize their own volunteers and members. I've always felt it was a terrific opportunity to spotlight some of the hidden heroes that existed in local genealogical organizations. This is a tradition that will be carried forward by the new NGS. FGS also had successes beyond these projects and many have been preserved, adopted, and made available by NGS. The Forum Magazine. The Forum Archives are now available online at the NGS website under the Society and Organization Resources tab. The White Papers, which were entitled the FGS Society Strategy Series, has been renamed the Information and Answer Series. This valuable series is being revised, updated, and added to. The information and answer series is also available on the NGS website. And of course, there's conferences and focus on society. NGS will continue to provide exceptional educational events for individuals and organizational leaders, including carrying on the tradition of focus on society, which will be this Friday. The new NGS, as part of the merger agreement with FGS, and to show their commitment to listen to the needs of society and organization members, NGS thought necessary to revise their bylaws. 
The revision created two new roles, the Vice President of Society and Organization Management, who is the link to the board, and an advisory body, which is the Delegate Council. Recognizing the need to create the new Delegate Council, NGS created a steering committee to begin the work of structuring that body. The steering committee was launched in November 2020 to create the basic structure of the Delegate Council on which you now serve. Here's a quick look at some of the work we've completed. We established a name for the body. Initially called the House of Delegates, the steering committee adopted a new name we felt better represents the work we will do. We chose the name the Delegate Council, keeping the word delegate in the title to honor their tradition of FGS and member representatives serving as delegates. We've clarified the role of the Delegate Council, identified the purpose of the Delegate Council, built the foundation, defined the role of a delegate, and created and designed this workshop. So what is the role of the Delegate Council? The Delegate Council is an advisory body. It is responsible for providing advice on genealogy and family history issues to the Board of Directors. It is also responsible for providing advice to the Board on how NGS can best serve genealogy and family history organizations. What is the purpose of the Delegate Council? The purpose of the Delegate Council is building the community of genealogy organizations through communication, collaboration, and counsel. During the course of the workshop today, we will guide you through each of these seeds and what each of these mean. In our breakout groups today, we will see how each seed will work in the context of the Delegate Council. The Delegate Council structure is comprised of a representative from each and every member organization. The DC is a self-governing body, an independent body. You will make your own agenda and set your own policies as you see fit in accordance with the NGS board directives. A member of the NGS professional staff will also be assigned to support the Delegate Council. At the first meeting of the Delegate Council, you will elect a chair, a vice chair, and appoint a secretary. The Delegate Council will meet quarterly, four times a year. You'll hear more about these quarterly meetings later today. What, what is the role of a delegate? You, as a delegate of your organization, are your organization's voice to NGS. What does that mean? First, as the official representative of your organization, you will cast your organization's vote in NGS elections. Second, you can share your organization's successes, concerns, and issues and opinions with other delegates and with the Delegate Council. And most of all, your role of a delegate is to influence NGS's direction in serving the community of genealogy organizations. The work of the Delegate Council and the delegates rest on the three C's, communication, collaboration, and council. These three cornerstones of the Delegate Council will partner with NGS to carry out the advisory responsibility. Together, we will build the community of genealogy organizations through communication, collaboration, and council. Now let's get to work. Back to you, Ethan. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Dawn. Certainly helpful to talk and learn about how we got to where we are now as we look forward. Um, and that context will, will frame a lot of the conversations we're going to have throughout the day. Um, now we have planned uh, to enter into the first of our breakout sessions. We have 30 minutes scheduled to talk about general genealogy organization needs. So this is going to give uh, you all an opportunity to talk openly with your, with your delegate peers in the breakout groups that we will work in for the majority of the afternoon. Uh, this discussion will immediately be followed by a 10 minute break. So you can be prepared for that. Um, <clears throat> so I'll now ask production staff to transition attendees into those predetermined A, B, and C groups, please. <laughs> 